Hi, I'm Dale Eason, and this is a short, almost unedited video of how to set up a bath interferometer to make interferograms. Okay, here's a bath interferometer. Over here on the left, this is the laser. Turn it on now. The laser module shines into this beam splitter cube right here. The beam splitter cube sends one beam out this way, one passes through the splitter, and this mirror sends a beam out that way. Here in the front of it, we have a small little diverging lens that's going to diverge the uh, beam off to the mirror under test, and the mirror under test will eventually send the beam back through the uh, diverging lens and come back out through the cube, and we'll be able to see an interferogram here in the back side. For course positioning controls, I can move the tripod that the interferometer is uh, mounted on. I can move it forward and back, of course, and sideways any way I want. But I can also, it's nice to be able to have course up and down adjustment. In addition to the course controls, I also have fine adjustment on the interferometer. I can get it to move left and right with this fine control. I can get it to move up and down with this one. And I can get it to go to and from the mirror with this control. All of them make it very easy to help set up the interferometer and get it positioned nicely for uh, taking interferograms. Setting up an interferometer is just much like setting up a Foucault stage or a Ronke stage. We have our mirror set up here, interferometer set up here, and the laser beam will shine off and we'll align it so we can see one of the beams hitting the mirror there. There is a large beam expanding onto the mirror and that beam is shining back towards the interferometer. And we can use that to help us find the radius of curvature of the mirror where we want to set up the interferometer. Okay, now I have the interferometer beam hitting the mirror and the return beam is coming back and I on purpose have had it set up so the interferometer is actually way too close to the mirror but you can see the outline of the mirror which in this case is a small cassegrain primary with a hole in the middle of it you can see it being focused here and as I move it back further and further back here it gets smaller and smaller and so our radius of curvature was going to be probably about right here is where we want to set the interferometer so I'm going to try to move it back there right now so now I've gotten a smaller beam let's move it back right about there and the next thing I have to do is I want to get this beam centered back onto the laser uh, onto, centered back onto the, the uh, expanding uh, lens so I'll do that by raising the interferometer it's over here to the right now move the interferometer to the left. Now you can see that the there's the return. Actually this is easier than setting up a Foucault because we have beams coming back to us so we can see already. And there I have the beam close to where I want it to be right now for the first phase of the setup. In the next scene of the video I'm going to be adjusting using the fine controls that I showed earlier on the interferometer. I'll be using those to adjust the uh, output of the interferometer to get an interferogram. Alright, now I have the beam, the interferometer set up pretty close to radius of curvature. As you can see I 
here is the the white beam scattering out. Here's the the uh, I can move it left or right, and you might not be able to see it, but there's an interferogram starting to appear here on the edge. It has a bullseye circle in it, and I can so I move the interferometer up and down until I get that bullseye circle where I want to, where I want it. In this case, I want it a little bit more in the center of the mirror. I want to enlarge it, so I'm going to move the interferometer either backwards, see if it expands. No, it gets smaller, so I'll try going, moving the interferometer towards the mirror. And the interferogram is starting to expand now as it goes across the mirror. I've had to move the interferometer a bit more and more towards the mirror. Now we're getting pretty good interferom interferogram that we could uh, take a picture of by putting our camera back here at the back. Take a picture of the inter interferogram and analyze it. You can see as I move, touch things, the interferogram moves around a bit. Okay, now I'm holding the camera behind the interferometer where I had the uh, screen a minute ago. As a, I apologize, I can't hold it very steady because I don't have a tripod on it right now. But that's what the interferogram looks like. There are several ways to capture the interferogram using a camera. Here's what I like to do. I have a Nikon digital camera that I put old Nikon lenses on they can be had very cheaply and I use that camera with a zoom lens of about 100 millimeter zoom lens to capture my interferograms other people and I have as well you can use a webcam if you replace the lens with a uh, telephoto lens off the webcam that they can be used Okay, that's all I have for now. I just wanted to show you how to set up a bath interferometer and how to use it. Other information can be found at the Yahoo Interferometry Group, where we also have links to our wiki webpage, which shows how to build a bath interferometer in more detail. Also there, you can find software to analyze the interferogram. One of the software packages one that I wrote is called OpenFringe, and it will allow you to analyze the interferograms, and the software package is free.